Well, many kids develop a fear of going to the doctor, and some of those kids take that fear into adulthood. Yeah, the problem, if something is wrong and you ignore the signs, you may have fewer options for treatment. So joining us now to help people conquer their medical fears is wellness coach and cancer thriver, Chris Carr. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. All right, so why do some people avoid going to the doctor? Well, going to the doctor brings up fear and anxiety, and both of these things flood our body with stress hormones. So these are very normal emotions, and we feel them. It's so easy to get stuck ruminating about what could happen and telling ourselves scary stories. Chris, I know you have been so open with your story and you have been living with stage four cancer for two decades. Is a medic medicine or a medical doctor something a fear you experience at some point? Absolutely. And again, it's so normal because these are scary spaces. But here are some of the things that I've learned. First and foremost, the power of practicing mental fitness to help yourself stay grounded. Now, the goal of mental fitness is basically to give your brain something healthier to do, something healthier to focus on. And I know we're going to talk about some of those things in a minute, mm -hmm. but these things help us bring ourselves back to the present moment. Okay, so how can we convince ourselves or maybe a loved one not to ignore the signs that something is wrong? Well, I have learned this the hard way, but I have found out that people aren't projects. What? This is very frustrating, right? <laughs> the only time we can change somebody is when they're in diapers, but we can let people in our lives know how much it would mean to us if they would take care of themselves and perhaps go to the doctor because we know that peace of mind is priceless and early detection saves lives. Oh, you're so right about that. Well, you have some affirmations to give people the courage to go to the doctor. Can you share the first one with us? Yes, I can improve my health, right? I can improve my health. So often we feel very powerless. And this affirmation allows us to become what I call an empowered participant in our well-being. It's, it's active rather than passive. Okay, mm -hmm. so the next one is all about the power of information. What do you mean by that? Well, look, it's all about feeling like I am empowered by information. And that is something that you can literally say to yourself because so often we're terrified, right? But if you say, wait a minute, let me look at this. I am empowered by information. And then you can go about becoming a wellness detective, right? Because if we don't know what's going on, it's hard to make a plan. Oh, let me ask you this. Can you talk about the importance of finding a doctor that you trust? Because I think that's something that people really have a tough time with. Yeah, absolutely. Look, the first doctor I spoke to suggested a triple organ transplant. The second one gave me 10 years to live, and that was 20 years ago, right? So finding that doctor is so important. And I like to think of it like actively becoming the CEO of your health. What do CEOs do? They build teams, they interview, they hire, they sometimes fire, right? And they look for two job requirements specifically when it comes to doctors. First, do this, they have or this person have the finger on their pulse of the latest treatments? And number two, do they have a good bedside manner? Because here's the thing, you are a whole person with whole person needs. You are not a statistic and you deserve to be treated accordingly. So we know a lot of people fear going to the doctor because they don't feel prepared or hearing a diagnosis. So what are some other ways that they can kind of ease that anxiety? Would you suggest them like writing things down or having someone come with them? I love th those are two beautiful suggestions. You know, oftentimes we hear one thing, but the doctor said something else. So I would say what you suggested is the number one thing which is don't go alone. Have somebody come with you, have that person take notes so that you can go through it later because more often than not, it might not be as bad as you think it is. Right. That is so true and to make sure you are heard when you go into that doctor. If you feel like a doctor is not hearing you, what should you do about that? Well, if a doctor isn't hearing you, first and foremost, I would just say, I don't feel like you're listening to me. I'm having a hard time feeling like I'm heard and I'd really like to try this again. And so slowing the conversation down, that's your time. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes you will feel rushed, but just saying, I need to slow this down because I don't feel like you're listening. Oh, so important. All right, well, Chris, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story. Thanks for having me. All right, for more inspiration, you can follow Chris on Instagram. The information is right there on, oh, crazy, sexy Chris. Mm -hmm. I love that on your screen. <laughs>